Siberia, Russian, Sibir tr. Sibirj, IPA, SBIR Listen is an extensive geographical region spanning much of Eurasia and North Asia. Siberia has historically been a part of modern Russia since the 16th and 17th centuries. The territory of Siberia extends eastwards from the Ural Mountains to the watershed between the Pacific and Arctic drainage basins. The Yenisei River conditionally divides Siberia into two parts, western and eastern. Siberia stretches southwards from the Arctic Ocean to the hills of north-central Kazakhstan and to the national borders of Mongolia and China. With an area of 13.1 million square kilometers, 5,100,000 square miles, Siberia accounts for 77% of Russia's land area, but it is home to approximately 36 million people, 27% of the country's population. This is equivalent to an average population density of about 3 inhabitants per square kilometer, 7.8 per square miles, approximately equal to that of Australia, making Siberia one of the most sparsely populated regions on earth. If it were a country by itself, it would still be the largest country in area, but in population it would be the world's 35th largest and Asia's 14th largest. Worldwide, Siberia is well known primarily for its long, harsh winters, with a January average of minus 25 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as its extensive history of use by Russian and Soviet administrations as a place for prisons, labor camps, and exile. Etymology The origin of the name is unknown. Some sources say that Siberia originates from the Siberian Tatar word for sleeping land. Another account sees the name as the ancient tribal ethnonym of the Sertia, also Syapir, SPR, an ethnic group which spoke a Paleo Siberian language. The Sertia people were later assimilated into the Siberian Tatars. The modern usage of the name was recorded in the Russian language after the empire's conquest of the Siberian Khanate. A further variant claims that the region was named after the XIBE people. The Polish historian Czajklikowski has proposed that the name derives from the Proto-Slavic word for North, Sever Sever, but Anatol Baikalov has dismissed this explanation. He said that the neighboring Chinese, Turks, and Mongolians, who have similar names for the region, would not have known Russian. He suggests that the name might be a combination of two words with Turkic origin, su, water, and beer, wild land. <laughs> Prehistory The region has paleontological significance, as it contains bodies of prehistoric animals from the Pleistocene epoch, preserved in ice or in permafrost. Specimens of Goldfuss cave lion cubs, yuca mammoth, and another woolly mammoth from Oymyakon, a woolly rhinoceros from the Kalima River, and bison and horses from Yukajur have been found. The Siberian traps were formed by one of the largest known volcanic events of the last 500 million years of Earth's geological history. Their activity continued for a million years and some scientists consider it a possible cause of the Great Dying. About 250 million years ago, estimated to have killed 90% of species existing at the time, at least three species of human lived in southern Siberia around 40,000 years ago, H. sapiens, H. neanderthalensis, and the Denisovans. In 2010 DNA evidence identified the last as a separate species. History Siberia was inhabited by different groups of nomads such as the Enets, the Nenets, the Huns, the Scythians and the Uyghurs. The Khan of Sibir in the vicinity of modern Tobolsk was known as a prominent figure who endorsed Kubrit as Khagan of Old Great Bulgaria in 630. The Mongols conquered a large part of this area early in the 13th century. With the breakup of the Golden Horde, the autonomous Khanate of Sibir was established in the late 15th century. Turkic-speaking Yakut migrated north from the Lake Baikal region under pressure from the Mongol tribes during the 13th to 15th century. Siberia remained a sparsely populated area. Historian John F. Richards wrote, It is doubtful that the total early modern Siberian population exceeded 300,000 persons. The growing power of Russia in the west began to undermine the Siberian Khanate in the 16th century. First, groups of traders and Cossacks began to enter the area. 
The Russian army was directed to establish forts farther and farther east to protect new settlers from European Russia. Towns such as Mangazia, Terra, Yenisisk and Tobolsh were developed, the last being declared the capital of Siberia. At this time, Sibir was the name of a fortress at Koshlik, near Tobolsh. Gerardus Mercator, in a map published in 1595, marks Sibir both as the name of a settlement and of the surrounding territory along a left tributary of the Ob. Other sources contend that the Xibe, an indigenous Tungusic people, offered fierce resistance to Russian expansion beyond the Urals. Some suggest that the term, Siberia, is a Russification of their ethnonym. By the mid-17th century, Russia had established areas of control that extended to the Pacific. Some 230,000 Russians had settled in Siberia by 1709. Siberia was a destination for sending exiles. The first great modern change in Siberia was the Trans Siberian Railway, constructed during 1891 to 1916. It linked Siberia more closely to the rapidly industrializing Russia of Nicholas II. Around 7 million people moved to Siberia from European Russia between 1801 and 1914. From 1859 to 1917, more than half a million people migrated to the Russian Far East. Siberia has extensive natural resources. During the 20th century, large-scale exploitation of these was developed, and industrial towns cropped up throughout the region. At 7.15 a.m. on 30 June 1908, millions of trees were felled near the Podkamenea Tunguska Stony Tunguska River in central Siberia in the Tunguska event. Most scientists believe this resulted from the air burst of a meteor or a comet. Even though no crater has ever been found, the landscape in the sparsely inhabited area still bears the scars of this event. In the early decades of the Soviet Union, especially the 1930s and 1940s, the government established the Gulag State Agency to administer a system of penal labor camps, replacing the previous Katorga system. According to semi-official Soviet estimates, which were not made public until after the fall of the Soviet government, from 1929 to 1953 more than 14 million people passed through these camps and prisons, many of which were in Siberia. Another 7 to 8 million people were internally deported to remote areas of the Soviet Union including entire nationalities or ethnicities in several cases. Half a million prisoners died in camps from 1941 to 1943 due to food shortages caused by World War II. At other periods, mortality was comparatively lower. The size, scope, and scale of the Gulag slave labor camps remains a subject of much research and debate. Many gulag camps were positioned in extremely remote areas of northeastern Siberia. The best known clusters are Sevostlag, the northeast camps along the Kalima River and Norilag near Norilsh, where 69,000 prisoners were kept in 1952. Major industrial cities of northern Siberia, such as Norilsh and Magadan, developed from camps built by prisoners and run by former prisoners. Topic: <laughs> Geography With an area of 13.1 million square kilometers 5,100,000 square miles, Siberia makes up roughly 77% of Russia's total territory and almost 10% of Earth's land surface 148,940,000 square kilometers, 57,510,000 square miles. While Siberia falls entirely within Asia, many authorities such as the UN Geoscheme will not subdivide countries and will place all of Russia as part of Europe and or Eastern Europe. Major geographical zones include the West Siberian Plain and the Central Siberian Plateau. Eastern and Central Sakha comprises numerous north-south mountain ranges of various ages. These mountains extend up to almost 3,000 meters 9, feet, but above a few hundred meters they are almost completely devoid of vegetation. The Verkhoyansk range was extensively glaciated in the Pleistocene, but the climate was too dry for glaciation to extend to low elevations. At these low elevations are numerous valleys, many of them deep and covered with large forest, except in the extreme north where the tundra dominates. Soils are mainly turbals, a type of gelisol. The active layer tends to be less than one meter deep, except near rivers. The highest point in Siberia is the active volcano Klyuchevskaya Sopka, on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Its peak is at 4,750 meters 15,580 feet. 
Mountain ranges Lakes and rivers Grasslands UKOK Plateau — part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site Geology The West Siberian Plain consists mostly of Cenozoic alluvial deposits and is somewhat flat. Many deposits on this plain result from ice dams which produced a large glacial lake. This mid to late Pleistocene lake blocked the northward flow of the Ob and Yenisei rivers, resulting in a redirection southwest into the Caspian and Aral Seas via the Turgai Valley. The area is very swampy, and soils are mostly peaty histosols and, in the treeless northern part, histals. In the south of the plain, where permafrost is largely absent, rich grasslands that are an extension of the Kazakh steppe formed the original vegetation, most of which is no longer visible. The central Siberian plateau is an ancient craton, sometimes named Angaraland, that formed an independent continent before the Permian. See the Siberian continent. It is exceptionally rich in minerals, containing large deposits of gold, diamonds, and ores of manganese, lead, zinc, nickel, cobalt, and molybdenum. Much of the area includes the Siberian Traps, a large igneous province. This massive eruptive period was approximately coincident with the Permian-Triassic extinction event. The volcanic event is said to be the largest known volcanic eruption in Earth's history. Only the extreme northwest was glaciated during the Quaternary, but almost all is under exceptionally deep permafrost, and the only tree that can thrive, despite the warm summers, is the deciduous Siberian larch Laryx siberica, with its very shallow roots. Outside the extreme northwest, the taiga is dominant, covering a significant fraction of the entirety of Siberia. Soils here are mainly turbals, giving way to spadasols where the active layer becomes thicker and the ice content lower. The Lena Tunguska Petroleum Province includes the Central Siberian Platform some authors refer to it as the Eastern Siberian Platform, bounded on the northeast and east by the Late Carboniferous through jurassic verkhoyansk Foldbelt, on the northwest by the Paleozoic Taymr Foldbelt, and on the southeast, south and southwest by the Middle Silurian to Middle Devonian Baikalian Foldbelt. A regional geologic reconnaissance study begun in 1932, followed by surface and subsurface mapping, revealed the Markova Angara Arch. Anticline. This led to the discovery of the Markovo oil field in 1962 with the Markovo 1 well, which produced from the early Cambrian OSA Horizon Bar sandstone at a depth of 2,156 metres. 7 feet. The Sredny Botuobin gas field was discovered in 1970, producing from the OSA and the Proterozoic Parfanovo horizon. The Yarokton oil field was discovered in 1971, producing from the Vendian Yarokton horizon at depths of up to 1,750 metres, 5,740 feet, which lies below Permian to lower Jurassic basalt traps. Topic. Climate The climate of Siberia varies dramatically, but it typically has short summers and long, brutally cold winters. On the north coast, north of the Arctic Circle, there is a very short about one month long, summer. Almost all the population lives in the south, along the Trans-Siberian Railway. The climate in this southernmost part is humid continental climate with cold winters but fairly warm summers lasting at least four months. The annual average is about 0.5 degrees Celsius .9 degrees Fahrenheit. January averages about minus 20 degrees Celsius minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and July about plus 19 degrees Celsius 66 degrees Fahrenheit while daytime temperatures in summer typically are above 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit. With a reliable growing season, an abundance of sunshine and exceedingly fertile Chernozem soils, southern Siberia is good enough for profitable agriculture, as was proven in the early 20th century. By far the most commonly occurring climate in Siberia is continental subarctic Köppen DFC or DWC, with the annual average temperature about minus 5 degrees Celsius 23 degrees Fahrenheit and an average for January of minus 25 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit and an average for July of plus 17 degrees Celsius 63 degrees Fahrenheit, although this varies considerably, with a July average about 10 degrees Celsius 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the Taiga Tundra eco 
The business-oriented website and blog Business Insider lists Verkhoyansk and Oymyakin, in Siberia's Sakha Republic, as being in competition for the title of the Northern Hemisphere's Pole of Cold. Oymyakin is a village which recorded a temperature of minus 67.7 degrees Celsius minus 89.9 degrees Fahrenheit on 6 February 1933. Verkhoyansk, a town further north and further inland, recorded a temperature of minus 69.8 degrees Celsius minus 93.6 degrees Fahrenheit for three consecutive nights, 5, 6 and 7 February 1933. Each town is alternately considered the Northern Hemisphere's pole of cold, meaning the coldest inhabited point in the Northern Hemisphere. Each town also frequently reaches 86 degrees Fahrenheit 30 degrees Celsius in the summer, giving them, and much of the rest of Russian Siberia, the world's greatest temperature variation between summer's highs and winter's lows, often being well over 170 to 180 plus degree F 94 to 100 plus degree C between the seasons, southwesterly winds bring warm air from Central Asia and the Middle East. The climate in West Siberia OMSK, Novosibirsk, is several degrees warmer than in the east Irkutsk, Chita, where in the north an extreme winter subarctic climate Kopen DFD or DWD prevails. But summer temperatures in other regions can reach plus 38 degrees Celsius 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, Sakha is the coldest Siberian region, and the basin of the Yana River has the lowest temperatures of all, with permafrost reaching 1,493 metres Nevertheless, as far as Imperial Russian plans of settlement were concerned, cold was never viewed as an impediment. In the winter, southern Siberia sits near the centre of the semi-permanent Siberian high, so winds are usually light in the winter. Precipitation in Siberia is generally low, exceeding 500 mm in only in Kamchatka where moist winds flow from the Sea of Okhotsk onto high mountains, producing the region's only major glaciers, though volcanic eruptions and low summer temperatures allow limited forests to grow. Precipitation is high also in most of Primory in the extreme south where monsoonal influences can produce quite heavy summer rainfall. Researchers, including Sergei Kurpotin at Tomsk State University and Judith Marquand at Oxford University, warn that western Siberia has begun to thaw as a result of global warming. The frozen peat bogs in this region may hold billions of tons of methane gas, which may be released into the atmosphere. Methane is a greenhouse gas 22 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. In 2008, a research expedition for the American Geophysical Union detected levels of methane up to 100 times above normal in the atmosphere above the Siberian Arctic, likely the result of methane clathrates being released through holes in a frozen lid of seabed permafrost, around the outfall of the Lena River and the area between the Laptev Sea and East Siberian Sea. Fauna <laughs> 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 Order Artiodactyla Manchurian wapiti Siberian musk deer Topic Order Carnivora Topic Family Felidae Amur leopard Amur tiger Topic Family Ursidae Asian black bear Brown bear Polar bear Topic Flora Picea obovada Pinus pumila Topic Politics Topic Borders and administrative division The term, Siberia, has a long history. Its meaning has gradually changed during ages. Historically, Siberia was defined as the whole part of Russia to the east of Ural Mountains, including the Russian Far East. 
According to this definition, Siberia extended eastward from the Ural Mountains to the Pacific coast, and southward from the Arctic Ocean to the border of Russian Central Asia and the national borders of both Mongolia and China. Soviet era sources, Great Soviet Encyclopedia and others, and modern Russian ones usually define Siberia as a region extending eastward from the Ural Mountains to the watershed between Pacific and Arctic drainage basins, and southward from the Arctic Ocean to the hills of North Central Kazakhstan and the national borders of both Mongolia. Mongolia and China. By this definition, Siberia includes the federal subjects of the Siberian Federal District, and some of the Ural Federal District, as well as Sakha Republic, which is a part of the Far Eastern Federal District. Geographically, this definition includes subdivisions of several other subjects of Urals and Far Eastern Federal Districts, but they are not included administratively. This definition excludes Sverdlovsk Oblast and Chelyabinsk Oblast, both of which are included in some wider definitions of Siberia. Other sources may use either a somewhat wider definition that states the Pacific coast, not the watershed, is the eastern boundary thus including the whole Russian Far East or a somewhat narrower one that limits Siberia to the Siberian Federal District thus excluding all subjects of other districts. In Russian, the word for Siberia is used as a substitute for the name of the federal district by those who live in the district itself and less commonly used to denote the federal district by people residing outside of it. <laughs> Major cities The most populous city of Siberia, as well as the third most populous city of Russia, is the city of Novosibirsk. Other major cities include Barnal. Irkutsk, Kemerovo, Krasnoyarsk, Novokuznetsk, OMSK, Tomsk, Tyumen. Wider definitions of Siberia also include Chelyabinsk, Khabarovsk, Vladivostok, Yekaterinburg. Some sources, such as Encyclopedia Britannica, include this city as it lies in the Ural Mountains. Inhabitants have distanced themselves though saying that there is a difference between Siberian and Urals culture. Economy Siberia is extraordinarily rich in minerals, containing ores of almost all economically valuable metals. It has some of the world's largest deposits of nickel, gold, lead, coal, molybdenum, gypsum, diamonds, diopside, silver and zinc, as well as extensive and exploited resources of oil and natural gas. Around 70% of Russia's developed oil fields are in the Kantimansiysk region. Russia contains about 40% of the world's known resources of nickel at the Norilsh deposit in Siberia. Norilsh nickel is the world's biggest nickel and palladium producer. Siberian agriculture is severely restricted by the short growing season of most of the region. However, in the southwest where soils are exceedingly fertile black earths and the climate is a little more moderate, there is extensive cropping of wheat, barley, rye and potatoes, along with the grazing of large numbers of sheep and cattle. Elsewhere food production, owing to the poor fertility of the podzolic soils and the extremely short growing seasons, is restricted to the herding of reindeer in the tundra, which has been practiced by natives for over 10,000 years. Siberia has the world's largest forests. Timber remains an important source of revenue, even though many forests in the east have been logged much more rapidly than they are able to recover. The Sea of Okhotsk is one of the two or three richest fisheries in the world owing to its cold currents and very large tidal ranges, and thus Siberia produces over 10% of the world's annual fish catch, although fishing has declined somewhat since the collapse of the USSR, while the development of renewable energy in Russia is held back by the lack of a conducive government policy framework, Siberia still offers special opportunities for off-grid renewable energy developments. Remote parts of Siberia are too costly to connect to central electricity and gas grids, and have therefore historically been supplied with costly diesel, sometimes flown in by helicopter. In such cases renewable energy is often cheaper. <laughs> Sport Professional football teams include FC Tom Tomsk, FC Sibir Novosibirsk and FK Unisi Krasnoyarsk. The Unisi Krasnoyarsk basketball team has played in the VTB United League since 2011-12. Russia's third most popular sport, bandy, is important in Siberia. 
In the 2015–16 Russian Bandy Super League season Yenisi from Krasnoyarsk became champions for the third year in a row by beating Bakel Energia from Irkutsk in the final. Two or three more teams depending on the definition of Siberia play in the Super League, the 2016–17 champions Ska Neftyanik from Khabarovsk as well as Kuzbas from Kemerovo and Sibsalmash from Novosibirsk. In 2007 Kemerovo got Russia's first indoor arena specifically built for Bandy. Now Khabarovsk has the world's biggest indoor arena specifically built for Bandy, Arena Yurufi. It will be the venue for Division A of the 2018 World Championship. The 2019 Winter Universiade will be hosted by Krasnoyarsk. Demographics According to the Russian census of 2010, the Siberian and Far Eastern Federal Districts, located entirely east of the Ural Mountains, together have a population of about 25.6 million. Tyumen and Kurgan Oblasts, which are geographically in Siberia but administratively part of the Urals Federal District, together have a population of about 4.3 million. Thus, the whole region of Asian Russia or Siberia in the broadest usage of the term is home to approximately 30 million people. It has a population density of about 3 people per square kilometer. All Siberians are Russian citizens, and of these Russian citizens of Siberia, most are Slavic origin Russians and Russified Ukrainians. The remaining Russian citizens of Siberia consists of other groups of non-indigenous ethnic origins and those of indigenous Siberian origin. Among the largest non-Slavic group of Russian citizens of Siberia are the approximately 400,000 ethnic Volga Germans. The original indigenous groups of Siberia, including Mongol and Turkic groups such as Buryats, Tuvanians, Yakuts, and Siberian Tatars still mostly reside in Siberia, though they are minorities outnumbered by all other non-indigenous Siberians. Indeed, Slavic origin Russians by themselves outnumber all of the indigenous peoples combined, both in Siberia as a whole and its cities, except in the Republic of Tuva. Slavic origin Russians make up the majority in the Buryat, Sakha, and Altai republics, outnumbering the indigenous Buryats, Sakha, and Altai. The Buryat make up only 25% of their own republic, and the Sakha and Altai each are only one third, and the Chukchi, Avenk, Kanti, Mansi, and Nenets are outnumbered by non indigenous peoples by 90% of the population. According to the 2002 census, there are 500,000 Tatars in Siberia, but of these, 300,000 are Volga Tatars who also settled in Siberia during periods of colonization and are thus also non indigenous Siberians, in contrast to the 200,000 Siberian Tatars which are indigenous to Siberia, of the indigenous Siberians, the Buryats, numbering approximately 500,000, are the most numerous group in Siberia, and they are mainly concentrated in their homeland, the Buryat Republic. According to the 2002 census there were 443,852 indigenous Yakuts. Other ethnic groups indigenous to Siberia include Kets, Avenks, Chukchis, Koryaks, Yupiks, and Yukagers. About 70% of Siberia's people live in cities, mainly in apartments. Many people also live in rural areas, in simple, spacious, log houses. Novosibirsk is the largest city in Siberia, with a population of about 1.5 million. Tobolsk, Tomsk, Tyumen, Krasnoyarsk, Irkutsk, and OMSK are the older, historical centers. Religion. There are a variety of beliefs throughout Siberia, including Orthodox Christianity, other denominations of Christianity, Tibetan Buddhism and Islam. The Siberian Federal District alone has an estimation of 250,000 Muslims. An estimated 70,000 Jews live in Siberia, some in the Jewish Autonomous Region. The predominant religious group is the Russian Orthodox Church. Tradition regards Siberia the archetypal home of shamanism, and polytheism is popular. These native sacred practices are considered by the tribes to be very ancient. There are records of Siberian tribal healing practices dating back to the 13th century. The vast territory of Siberia has many different local traditions of gods. These include, Ak Anna, Anapel, Bugadi Musan, Kara Khan, Kaltish Anki, Kinijay, Kurkal, Na, Nutenut, Numi Torum, Numi Turum, Pan, Pugu, Todot, Tokoyoto, Tamam, Zaya Ikesita, Zongat. 
Places with sacred areas include Olkhan, an island in Lake Baikal. Topic transport Many cities in northern Siberia, such as Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, cannot be reached by road, as there are virtually none connecting from other major cities in Russia or Asia. The best way to tour Siberia is through the Trans Siberian Railway. The Trans Siberian Railway operates from Moscow in the west to Vladivostok in the east. Cities that are located far from the railway are best reached by air or by the separate Baikal Amur Railway. BAM. Topic culture Topic Cuisine Stroganina is a raw fish dish of the indigenous people of northern Arctic Siberia made from raw, thin, long sliced frozen fish. It is a popular dish with native Siberians. Topic see also Siberian regionalism Topic References Topic Bibliography Batalden, Stephen K. The Newly Independent States of Eurasia, Handbook of Former Soviet Republics. Contributor Sandra L. Batalden revised ed. Greenwood Publishing Group. ISBN 0897749405. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Bisher, Jamie White Terror, Cossack Warlords of the Trans-Siberian. Routledge. ISBN 1135765952. Bisher, Jamie 2006. White Terror, Cossack Warlords of the Trans-Siberian. Routledge. ISBN 1135765962. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Black, Jeremy 2008. War and the World, Military Power and the Fate of Continents, 1450-2000. Yale University Press. ISBN 0300147694. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Nicholas B. Breifogel, Abby Schrader and Willard Sunderland eds, Peopling the Russian Periphery, Borderland Colonization in Eurasian History London, Routledge, 2007. Etkind, Alexander 2013. Internal Colonization, Russia's Imperial Experience. John Wiley & Sons. ISBN 0745673546. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Forsyth, James 1994. A History of the Peoples of Siberia, Russia's North Asian Colony 1581-1990 Illustrated, Reprint, Revised ed. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0521477719. Retrieved 24 April 2014. James Forsyth, A History of the Peoples of Siberia, Russia's North Asian Colony, 1581-1990 Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1994. Jack, Zachary Michael, ed. 2008. Inside the Ropes, Sportswriters Get Their Game On. U of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0803219075. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Stephen G. Marks, Road to Power, The Trans-Siberian Railroad and the Colonization of Asian Russia, 1850-1917 London, I.B. Tories, 1991. Moat, Victor L. 1998. Siberia, Worlds Apart. Westview Series on the Post-Soviet Republics Illustrated ed. Westview Press. ISBN 0813312981. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Igor V. Naumov, The History of Siberia. Edited by David Collins London, Routledge, 2009 Routledge Studies in the History of Russia and Eastern Europe. Stefan, John J. 1996. The Russian Far East, A History, Illustrated, Reprint ed. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0804727015. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Pesterev, V. 2015. Siberian Frontier, The Territory of Fear. Royal Geographical Society, with IBG, London. Wood, Allen, 2011. Russia's Frozen Frontier, A History of Siberia and the Russian Far East 1581-1991 Illustrated ed. A and C Black. ISBN 0340971246. x Retrieved 24 April 2014. Alan Wood ed. The History of Siberia, From Russian Conquest to Revolution London, Routledge, 1991. Condé Nast's Traveler, Vol. 36. Condé Nast Publications, 2001. Retrieved 24 April 2014. Yearbook. 
Contributor International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs. International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs, 1992. Retrieved 24 April 2014.